Fuck a sec. Fuck a sec. All right. Have you ever done a sick podcast and not hit play, not hit record? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We did it with James McCann. <laughs> Who's supposed to be yeah. here on uh, Friday. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, what how serendipitous <laughs> that you bring that up <laughs> the week that we're getting him yeah. back on. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we are here with uh, Nitro Circus. Todd. Freestyle BMX rider. Yeah, yeah. T- Would we say that? Freestyle BMX? Freestyle BMX, BMX yeah. Yep. Todd Mine or Main. Main. Depends where you're from. Main. Yeah. <laughs> Main if you're German. Um, uh, but first of all, uh, shout out to our brand new sponsor mm. that Frenchie did an excellent job of. Excellent. Can we just pl- put him in every single time? 100%. Yeah, let's just put... We'll just put him in. Like we're, he's going to go next. Oh, so I'd, tr- I'd, uh, Maybe. Like trades all cover and then he just jumps on and P- we get the audio? Potentially. Or too much editing? The listeners will know. Yeah. If it plays right now, right, yeah. bang, now, yeah. you heard Frenchie. And if, <laughs> and if, if you didn't, didn't hear Frenchie, <laughs> I couldn't be fucked doing it. Alltradescover.com.au. Yep. Uh, our new sponsor, thanks to John is, Elliott. You might have heard him on the pod, the man that walked across Australia for three and a half years with three to five camels. Mm-hmm. If you're a tradie and you need some sort of insurance yeah. uh, to help you with your coverage and making mistakes on site and stuff, they're the ones to hit up. That's they're it. for the uh, smaller they're for the small guys. For the small guys. So if you're a sole trader or a small business, they'll sort you out. Any yeah. trade covered. It's funny because I actually got hit up by someone when we posted that and they're like, fuck, I literally just signed up to someone else. Oh, so they fuck. can probably beat, they can cancel. beat that. Yeah. yeah, cancel and they will be better. Positive cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And shout out to Raunchy. We do not encourage drinking and BMXing. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but it's actually good. It's actually good. It is the beer that's actually good. Uh, they got about five or six different ranges. And now you can go into the link in our bio, and grab and our Instagram and our website or wherever it is. And there's an actual link to purchase yeah. it online. And Todd is sponsored by Nike. Just do yeah. it. Well, it used to be. <laughs> well, you say. Yeah, yeah. So we've got our local trades. Up, he's, he's got Nike. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what did we speak about, man? It was a really good episode. Nice yeah, really and positive. Good. Mm. What did we cover? Uh, a lot, I think. Uh, just kind of the basis of how I got into action sports. Yeah. How nostalgia. How the Nitro Circus thing came about. Life yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, Creating a business. I just re- we didn't really finish cool. the injury list. But oh, yeah. That's all right. We'd probably still be going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, nah, just a good convo. Was Loved one it. of the injuries short-term memory? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah definitely. 100%. <laughs> Man, yeah. this was a fucking good episode. It's, in, it's motivational. It's fucking insightful. It's, it's happy. Happened. Oh, yeah. Very oh. infectious, positive energy. And this was a, a, a suggestion from uh, a Brody listener. Collins. So, yeah, so that's, shout um, out, Brodes. Uh, listeners, if you have more suggestions, uh, like we say in the podcast, uh, some of them are meh, yeah, but, but this, this one was a great one. Awesome. Uh, hope, yeah, don't see too soon. <laughs> yeah. Get like one view, I'll be like, shit. Ah, fuck yeah. Welcoming right. Double D. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get hard. Let's get Welcome hard. to Hard Yarns Podcast. I am fucking fat. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Chris White says, please <laughs> disregard it. 5D is actually a state of being. It's a unity consciousness. That was Hard Yarns with me, Frankie Rose. So I'm going to throw it over to your co-hosts. Daniel Adelby and Cameron Brand. I would do this and then I'd go. <laughs> Free in attendance for the millions listening at home. <laughs> Let's get hard. Oh, that shit. All right, fuck yeah. Mine? Mine. Fuck yeah. Mine. 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 I, I got to a point where I just gave up, and if people say mine, I'm like, yeah. Mm. Fuck yeah. It's like I have two lives. If it's like family and it's n- not to do with BMX, so I'll, I'll always say mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, if yeah. it's like BMX, <laughs> I just like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, mine. Yeah, <laughs> mine. But yeah, we just get into it, man. Yep. So uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Looking you're forward a, um, to it. Yeah. You're a suggested guest, so do love that. Yep. Um, Sometimes the suggested guests we get are like... <laughs> Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's why I'm excited because obviously normally the podcasts I do have to do with people that know a lot about action sports. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what to expect. So yeah, yeah. this will be good. Well, it's always good, man, because we like I, I always come at, at from the perspective of if we don't know it and then we're asking those questions, then the people at home and, and the listening. listeners will have the same sort yeah. of questions. Yeah. So. And it'll be a whole new market, I guess, that you can reach as well to mm. um, 
introduced to the sport. Yep. Mm. Um, because we all see the X Games and shit on TV. Yeah. I was like, I'll fucking do that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could not do it. But, uh, yeah, man, because I, I, I loved, I grew up BMXing, but we were half talking. It's hard before a pod, man. Yeah. You get talking yeah. and you're like, oh, I want to. Don't want to repeat yeah, the Yeah, but, um, yeah, I loved BMXing. I was that kid who would, like, go to this local school, build a jump, Light a fire in between yeah. it, jump and over. Now he's an adult so that goes to the local school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's, one, that's one thing you said before, and I didn't want to get into it, but yeah. that's uh, that was always the funnest stuff. And that's actually how I got into it. Was um, I had a skateboard and I sucked at it, yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. bad at it. That's yeah. a whole nother story, yeah. But uh, it was just a kid built a little jump, yeah, in, out the front of his house, and literally. That is where it all started from that day. So yeah. it was kind of when you were saying that, I was like, I've got so much to say right That's, now. Yeah. Mate, it's so sick because um, the getting like getting outdoors, doing that sort of shit. Like I, w- uh, I tried to do skateboarding, mm. but I could tic tac. Is that what they call it? <laughs> you know, when you go it's more than I could do. mate, is when you film it. <laughs> I could, I could, I, could uh, I could half ollie, and the worst part was I didn't have the standard st- skateboard with it on both ends. Mm. I had the big the fat one. one. That's what the, I yeah, had. Yeah. I had that assault from my back. old man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad yeah. was like, yeah, we had these back in yeah. the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Sick. Yeah, oh, fuck, man. The, I grew up in Lansdale. So how old are you? I am 31. Nice, yeah. So we're both oh, youthful. 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. Grew, up <laughs> a, grew up in a suburb called Lansdale and uh, the only way we got around, man, was on a pushy. Yeah. Mm. So like... If you wanted to find out if your mates were home, you had to fucking ride your bike there and knock on the door. Yep. Nah, he's at Jeff's. You get to Jeff's. Nah, he's at Wazza's. Then you realise I don't actually want to <laughs> hang out with him. <laughs> that were there the whole time. <laughs> but yeah. but, but um, I was always the... I, I did, we didn't have money, so I had the mountain bike, like the shitty... But they had like mongooses, haros. Yeah. And they're doing jumps on their sick mountain bikes. And um, who was it? Brendan uh, Pally. Uh, Pally and... What was his last name? Yeah, he was like a full BMXer as well. Um, Brendan Pal- Palestine. What was Gemma from Palantine? Palantine. Do you know Brendan no, Palantine? No, I can't say I do. Yeah, so he was like the maddest BMX. He got like sponsorships and shit back then. Everyone's going like doing mad airs and I'm coming through just bus riding on my fucking, <laughs> on my mountain bike and just getting fucked up man, the whole time. <laughs> but um, what, what did you run around with? Like, so you would have been on... What, I, I, Haros, so Among when, the, when, that, when my friend built that jump, yeah. uh, well, his dad built the jump, I went to the shed in the backyard and just grabbed my brother's old 16 inch. Yeah. I think it was a rep cover or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what I started on. And then when I like, I was like, oh, I'm, I really like this. So uh, when my birthday came around and my dad, my parents knew I was really into it, yeah, they yeah. bought me a diamond back. Oh yeah. But it was within like a couple of weeks that it was way too big for me. So yeah. I went back to the Repco mm. and I roll, I rode the Repco <laughs> for like almost another year. And then when that broke, my dad got me a, a it was a five dollar bike from the Sunday market. Yeah, right. right. And I rode that for so long and learnt most of my basic tricks Fuck on that yeah. bike. So I rode around on it. <laughs> but I didn't didn't know any better. Like my handlebars were like not even proper. They were the ones where they came back. back like yeah, this. Yeah, and yeah. It was it was the best bike to learn on. And then you, my dad wouldn't like freak out if you like throw your bike or yeah. you crash <laughs> and you break something because he'd just go buy another five dollar yeah. one. How um how old were you then? Uh, I was. 10 yeah so before that as you were saying you were bad at skateboarding well i was even worse yeah, yeah, i yeah. was shit man yeah, yeah i was falling off every second and yeah. uh, i tried for a year and then that's when yeah. the bmx started so i was 10 mm. um and then pretty much uh from then one day my d- like back in the day when you put letters in the mailbox yeah. i'm like sending a text message we're just riding around the block and i lived around f- uh the road from the skate park yeah and I was like, oh, dad, can I do a jump? And I did one jump and literally, like, I remember it as if it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And from that day, I pretty much spent the rest of my life. Which skate park at, was uh, Belmont Skate Park. Yeah, right. So uh, I I live there. I live back there now. And I pretty much it's just because that, that skate park's yeah. there. <laughs> I love it. I don't go anywhere else. All yeah. my friends make fun of me and, yeah. and tease me because they're like, oh, you don't go anywhere else. I'm like, because all the other skate parks are shit, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, I still... Still ride every day. Yeah. I love Sick, it. Man. Was it pretty rare for you to be on a pu- uh, pushy when everyone else would have been on a skateboard and um, back then, or was it mixed? Man, I I feel like there was a. It's crazy because you go to the skate park now and there's not that many people there. Yeah. Mm. But back then is what we were talking about before. Is that 
like no one's really inside. Everyone's like, where do we go? All right, let's go to the yes. skate park. Yes. So there'd be like twi- like from what I remember, like 20, 30 people, like people on BMX and yeah. skateboards yeah. because that's where you just go to hang out. They A lot of them try and ride, yeah. but they were just more there to hang out. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So it was like, it, even if you didn't want to ride, you just go to the skate park and you'd go hang out. Yeah. I'd spend all day there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we just couldn't go to Kareen one because you get bashed. <laughs> <laughs> Kareen skate park was the most deadly. Yeah, my dad always came with me to that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the sun goes down, you're like, fuck, man. And you, Bel- try, you can't go through there. Belmont used to be really bad, yeah. Yeah. but everywhere changed. And uh, it's, all, it's awesome now that... Maybe because I'm older, yeah, yeah, yeah tough, yeah. you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's not much, not much trouble. Did um, you ever get around? There was one where all my mates that learnt to skate and um, pushy and that. It was the the God one near us in Wanneroo. The indoor one, oh. yeah. I, but you had I to go to just, church to get him for free. I, so I just missed that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I was just like, I was like at the stage where you'd go on Google and Google skate parks and the directory would come up. Yeah. And I remember seeing that and you're like, oh my God, an indoor, indoor skate park and you click and it was closed. I'm like, shit. Uh, so yeah. I just just was on the other end yeah. of that. I can't remember the name of it. It was right near us. It's on literally on Wanneroo Road yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. At the, where Whitford's Ave is and it's on the corner. But it was like the God Squad. Like you'd have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to skate for free, you had yeah. to go to church first. It's now a boat store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now a boat. Do you have to go to church before you get a boat? <laughs> <laughs> Is it free? Free boats? Well, no. Jesus just walks on water, so you don't need it. <laughs> no, they moved. Uh, they moved into Wangara Cross Road. Okay, basically. Yeah. Uh, from what, the church or the park? The, skate the park. church yeah. place. Like, yeah, it's and pretty they, smart. They've got, like, they've got everything there, man. It's pretty sick setup. If you do it's want kids to get into it, only reason I. <laughs> <laughs> I did the flooring there. That's oh, what, yeah, that's right. why I know that. But yeah. um, uh, yeah, with, with the Haro and stuff. So my hack was mum, my dad was, and mum, my mum and dad. When we grew up, we had fuck all money. So dad got me like some secondhand bike. Yeah, and I went and um, somehow I got hold of a Haro sticker. And I yeah. stuck it on the bike. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm riding a Haro. <laughs> I sanded it all back like, and painted it black so it, was, it wasn't the original colours yeah. and everything. I've definitely done that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I, and I was saying before, like you, you said you sort of just waited for all your mates to be up. Like that's what I used to do. Like I used to go out when I was in year three, year four, and I'd, I was saying I'd bounce the basketball. Yeah. And just like. Just by yourself. Just yeah. <laughs> or the footy. <laughs> just so all the kids in the neighbourhoods knew someone was outside. And oh, then that's every, like an alarm clock. Yeah. It was like everyone would run yeah. out and be like, right, let's go to the park. We go kick the footy down the park yeah. or play cricket or whatever. and um, yeah. Or bike. Like yeah. we had a hill. I grew up in Greenwood. And um, there was a hill on my, like I guess, cul-de-sac. Mm. And we'd ride down. And it was the first time I swapped bikes with one of my mates. And I always had back, back brakes, pedal yep. brakes. Yep. Yeah. And he had uh, handle brakes, and I—I I, I think I know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking zoom and zoom and yeah. down like fucking fast, and then I go to th- <laughs> I go to break and I go, Shh. <laughs> and I'm like ah fuck, and I well, I skid out and then slide, and I've, it's the first first time I ever had like with my burn. whole body, man, just fucking fuck. face. Like I had the helmet on, but like I still had a graze on my face, arms, like the whole lot. Yeah. And then just his family out the front going, oh, <laughs> that looked like a hurt, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, no shit. Cheers, can <laughs> you help me, cunt? I'm fucking, <laughs> I'm like 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man, I've had, yeah, this is funny. We've got a guess on, we're just talking about our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with everything because instead yeah. of that, I've definitely gone with a back and front break and I, I run mine different to everyone else. So I've gone to hit the back break and oh, it wasn't the back, front it was the front. Oh, and yeah, that, uh, that doesn't end well. Fuck, I remember <laughs> like we used to have pegs on just for dinking. As when oh, before yeah. pegging meant something else. <laughs> <laughs> and like any time we do a jump, if you fucking missed your foot your footing, yeah. I'd fucking shin the pegs. <laughs> oh the and shins on the pedals, man. Yeah, like oh. I had a hell bad habit when I land, my foot would come off. Yeah. So I'd always just land one footed, straight in the ass, yeah. the fucking seat. Oh. It's just but I legit the, have dents in my shin. Mm. I can still feel it. I do too. And if I, if someone said you have to wet, like, because every time I ride, like, yeah. I can't just go have a chill session. Yeah. It's all or nothing. So mm. I wear knee pads, shin pads. I got my ankle braces. Yeah, nice. And I always Smart. wear my helmet. But if someone said you have to pick one thing oh. just to go have a chill session, I would pick my shin pads over my helmet. Fucking Even though, like, there's nothing, <laughs> there is nothing yeah. worse. Then getting the pedals to the shin, Fuck hands oh. down. And it, you do feel so old talking like back in my day, yeah, this yeah. is what we did. But it was, and you said it before when we were chatting, like we got the arse end of that sort of era. Yep. With no and phones. You'd almost agree 
that now these kids would actually probably look back on what we used to get to do and get up to as like fuck that's way better than what I yeah, do. I, like, I yeah, I think that's the one thing they'll look they can look well yeah. not speaking for them but yeah. I'm pretty certain they'd be like man that was sick like yeah. they actually hung out outside yeah. and did things instead of me waiting for my friends to message me back which yeah. is, I think what well, even we do now. Because when yes. I think, I, never said, I don't even knock on doors Where anymore. I'm, ne- I'm at your house. <laughs> now yeah. they just don't text you back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Left on red. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> People's bikes out the front when you knew they're in, but not answering the door is the same as being left on uh, red. <laughs> <laughs> left on ped. Left on pedals. <laughs> oh fuck. But um, but yeah, I think you said that you don't forget that feeling of that first jump mm. and. There was something magical, I think, even like going through a car park and you could jump from one part of the garden bed and land on the other. There was something magic about that and something about feeling like, that sense like of flying. Yeah, and like it was it was good because there was people that knew how to build jumps and there were people that didn't and yep. it all depended on like the lip <laughs> and like you'd get like a boost of yeah. air. It's crazy, man. So or you get something that doesn't work. Yeah. You <laughs> shit. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up literally across the road from, uh, you know the remote control racing tracks? Yep. Yeah. I grew up across the road from a remote control racing track. So there was clay everywhere. So we had this big pile of clay and we just dug out the middle. So it was hard <laughs> as fuck. It was like perfect. Biggest, biggest lip, but yeah, yeah really fucked okay. us up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we so. did good. It was like clay is so easy to mold, not like sand. Like yeah. ye- yellow bricky sand yeah. just fucking falls a apart. Shovel. You know, like, <laughs> someone had, had a clay. shovel was like, that was like a gold fucking piece of equipment, man. When oh. someone would rock up with a shovel and then you'd find carpet on a building site. Yeah. To oh, it. yes. Uh, the carpet. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> how you'd fucking, yeah. Make it good. Uh, so, yeah. Well, so you've started as. Um, oh, I feel. So I'm we got nostalgia. nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> we got, back it out, hey. Now tell us about your amazing achievements. Um, so, like, you've gone from, like, doing neighborhood jumps. Yeah. To figuring out. You can do it at the skate park. Yeah. And then, like, what happens from there? Because you're 10 or 11 at this stage. Yeah, so um, I, I, I think the the thing that kind of put me in the right direction is obviously being around the right people in terms yeah. of, like, I, I was lucky enough that I was good enough when I was 11, 12 yeah. that I was friends with, like, the 15, 16-year-olds. So then when I got to 14, 15, I was mates with all... The yeah. 20, 25 year olds. Yeah. So it kind of just got to the point where they're like, hey, you should go to this contest. Yeah. And then kind of from that, it all kind of flowed. Yeah. Um, and then when I was 15, I got the opportunity to go to America for Sick. four weeks. Wow. I won't get too much into the backstory. Like, if this was like a yeah. more, it would probably be a bit more important, but it's not. <laughs> um, but I. It's still cool though, because it's something that you were into. So yeah, we, we like yeah, it. Yeah, thank I, I didn't mean it like that. I just meant, yeah, I, yeah. I think there's other cool things I can yeah. say <laughs> that I wouldn't normally say on, on that podcast. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. But I, um, so I, then I ended up being around professional guys, and it's a pretty small community action sports, really, compared yeah. to everything else. Yeah. So I met this Aussie pro at this contest in Sydney, and he was like, hey, you should come and stay with me in America. Oh. But that's how old, how old was he? <laughs> I was 15. And he's like, but, but that's what I mean. Like, this is how it is. Like, it's almost like there's no age. As I said, I was 15 yeah. and I'd be going around to a 22, 23 year old's house to go hang out. Yeah. And like, I mean, even now I'm 31. And if a kid at the skate park is 12 or 13 and he is sick because yeah. they're so young nowadays, yeah. like, he'd, he'd probably be my best mate because yeah. I, you know, Do like, godfather or mentor. Yeah. 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 So, um, I went to this place, Greenville, North Carolina. It was pretty much like the hub of BMX. It yep. was this little country town. How did you get there? Like, because I, the- I met this guy, Colin McKay. He was this Aussie pro yeah. and he lived in Greenville, North Carolina. So yeah, if cool. you if you were to go to like an X Games finals list, out of the 10, eight of them would be living in Greenville, North Carolina. Right. So um, I think... Uh, uh, most a lot of people would know listening to this podcast who Dave Mirror was yeah, yeah. or Ryan Nyquist. Yeah. So they moved to Greenville, North Carolina. I, I'm not sure who built theirs first, but Dave built his on one side of the town. And then I, I don't know 100%, but there was a little bit of a falling out with him and Ryan. And yeah. then Ryan, whoever it was first, went to the other side of town right. and built the other best skate park. And, in, wow. in the world. So yeah. there's, you got the two best skate parks in the world. Yeah. In North Carolina. You've, you've got Miro on one side, Nyquist on the other. Yeah. And it was kind of weird because um, where I kind of got introduced was Miro's side. Yeah. But it was like, 
if you rode Nike oh. you were there, and but there was no, there was no kind of beef. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's that's what he was like. Come stay with me. So he was like, but if you're coming, you should go to Woodward, which is an action sports camp. Um, if Sick. you're a little kid, it's like the only place you want to go. It's just a camp, and all it you do cool as is ride. Yeah. So I went there, and within two days, I met this guy Joey, and he was 22, yeah. and I'm fi- and he was like, "Oh, what are you doing here? Where are you from?" And I'm like, I'm "Here for two weeks, but then I'm going to Greenville." He's like, "Oh, no way! I'm moving there." Fuck. He goes, "You should just come and live with me." <laughs> so I hadn't even got to this Greenville place. So um, I after this four week trip. I went back home. Um, Were you, was your old man with you or anything? Or they yeah, just so I wasn't, but some life stuff happened. My old man's like, fuck it, life's short. Yeah. Go, let's let's do this. I'll so support you. So, so the supportive so side of your parents. Yes. Is there. That's yeah. great. So he was like, look, mate, I'll support you. Let, let's like go for it. Yeah. So um, I finished school at the end of year 10 and then packed my stuff and moved to this Greenville place with wow. this dude that I met. Uh, <laughs> for like a week and lived with him. Wow, was he was he sick at riding? Yeah, as well? he was. He was and same deal. A lot of people just moved to the town because yeah. they were trying to make it. Yeah, mm. you know, like yeah. What what high school did you go to? Uh, I went to Trinity. Right. Yeah. So, so, this so is, this your private school teachers would be like, I don't, uh, I don't know if this man. is the best career move. <laughs> and I don't even remember a lot of it, like just because you're so young. But I remember the nightmare my old man went through trying to pull me out, right. trying to tell him that he was doing the wrong thing. And yeah. which for, you know, probably a lot of people you'd say, it yeah, would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just lucky enough that it worked out. But a father supporting his <laughs> child's the actual dreams. one that's like, yeah. That, like, yeah, it seems a bit some, like, fuck. Like, but you would have been killing it up to that point. Um, like, yeah, you would have been all right yeah, at what you were doing. I guess he saw... Yeah, he's not going to saw the some, potential. Yeah. Some and, and spud it's, kid, and he's like, "Yeah, go for it." And it's crazy because <laughs> even though I always wanted to ride my bike, yeah, yeah. I I never was like, never was like, I want to be a professional BMX rider and make money and live in America. All I wanted to do was ride my bike. Yeah, I man. I know that like it's just all I wanted to do was ride my bike. Yeah. I never mm-hmm. thought about you know anything else yeah. in terms of. I want to do this and make money or... Was it even a real possibility back then to create an income or was it just starting the uh, extreme games? It, it, it was, was probably at its peak. Yeah. So it's a, it's, lot, it's a like lot different now. I kind of feel so, like uh, it's kind of like it's a lot harder now. Yeah. Is it you like know, the, when the, the, all the PlayStation games were coming out and it was really popular? Yeah, so yeah. there used to be um, a contest called the Do Tour. Mm-hmm. For us Aussies, we'd call it the Jew Tour, but yeah. they say do instead of Jew. Yeah. So it was a Jew Tour, and, and that was a massive contest, and that gave a lot of people a job through it because there were so many stops every year, yeah. and there was money for last plays, and that's when oh. there, there was there was heaps of sponsors. Sick. like People were getting sponsored by the most randomest companies yeah. um, just because just it was on TV cool. all the time, and it was it was something big. Yeah. yeah. Was so that as in Mountain Dew, the Dew tour? Yeah, Mountain Dew. Yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. It, it was a massive like it's it's a real shame that it's not around anymore. Yeah. And it's there isn't the sport isn't as big in terms of being able to make money. How uh, same deal. I just got vet, the guys maybe a f- couple years before even mm. even better position. Yeah, but there's just the the contests aren't there like yeah. how they used to be. They but it was are used to be. But yeah. it was also popularized even in like music videos. You get like Alien Ant Farm in a fucking yeah empty swimming pool and like all the people around skateboarding uh, on the BMXs yeah. and stuff. It was popular. It was cool and yeah. yeah. And for some reason now it's mumble rap. So yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't yeah. quite like it's more like and especially now like I look at it and it's like but it's more like athlete and eating well and and that like bmx and skateboarding quite hadn't got to that point yet yeah Yeah. like i feel like in the last five years it's really come about there's always those top 10 dudes taking it really seriously yeah Mm. but um but now it's like especially because last year was uh 2021 the olympics yeah uh that was the first year it was in the olympics Mm. yeah so now the whole thing's changed in terms like you know, used to let's r- ride do tour and but now it's like this whole process of let's do let's these stops for Olympics, Olympics. and yeah. there isn't as many sponsorship yeah. opportunities and mm. yeah right. So sorry, yeah. So you you met Joey and you you're gonna move yeah, to yeah yeah bit off, bit off track there. Yeah, we're always there, man. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. I warned him. I uh, warned him prior to the past. Yeah. So um, pretty much after that first quick trip at 15, moved to North Carolina and that's kind of where it all started. Yeah. And I just wanted to ride contests and that's all I wanted to do. And that 
anywhere in Perth, it's so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like that's the only bad thing about being in Perth is, yeah. you know, I could move to Sydney, mm. but four hours away on a plane, it's no different to being on the other side of the world. You still got to get on a plane to go home. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to move somewhere, you might as well yeah. go where it's the best. And it's pretty crazy, man. Like I never, like I, I was like friends with Mira. Like he would text me like, Hey, wow. Sesha. And like, I still think like, man, like I was so lucky. Like I, me and my dad hang out all the time and we'll, excuse me we'll always just sit there and we'll talk about this stuff and but that was an era that was like a 10 year period and i probably got to live you know seven eight years of it and like i wasn't at the level of all these guys making you know making top 10 at these contests i was still a long long way off Mm -hmm. but i was just all of a sudden put in the center of all these dudes because i was one, I just took the leap and went there and then I was Australian and there was a lot of Aussies that were living there as well. Yeah. And um, it's not like anyone could go ride these places. So I was just, I couldn't believe that I was yeah. kind of allowed to yeah. just go ride these places. Like it wasn't like we'll go ride whenever you had to wait from a, a message from, yeah. there was only like wow. three people that had keys. Wow. Yeah. And one of them, obviously it was Dave and this other Aussie, uh, Ryan Gutler. Yeah. And he kind of was the one apart from Colin that started the Aussie invasion. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then heaps of Aussies moved over there and then <laughs> kind of got a bad name. So like, <laughs> they're like, fuck all, all the fuck all these Aussies, man. Yeah. They're coming because there used to be maybe like eight dudes riding a session. Yeah. And now all of a sudden there's like 15, yeah. 20 dudes at a session. And it's, well, you know, we had, we it's, had. Like, it's like the Coachella of BMX. Yeah. Yeah. It's I like say, Aussies yeah. everywhere. And yeah. it's one at a time. It's not like a big skate, like it's a massive skate park, but it's one run yeah. at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it, it was the Aussie invasion and a lot of people got pissed and kind of... Uh, a lot of invading there, there was in a Australia. Li- yeah, <laughs> and and Historically. I, I sta- like, I did good. I did honestly stay away from the partying and yeah. all that yeah, for, cool. for a long time. Because um, you're 15. <laughs> no, no, so, sorry. I'm, I'm moving forward. It's like yeah, 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, but there was like a group of Aussies and they would go out and cause nice. havoc, man. Yeah. And that doesn't sound and, and it got to a point like to us. Like, <laughs> and, and it was a little like a uh, college town. Yeah. So like all the frat boys and all that stuff like hated the Aussies. Yeah. Because all the Aussies would go out and all the all the girls would want to go hang out with the BMX riders. Yeah. And oh yeah. Yeah, because so, they hate the Aussie accent, don't they, yeah. those girls? <laughs> <laughs> so you did all right with the girls? Uh, yeah, but yeah. as I said, I, I I stayed away from it for a long time. I always yeah. like to have a drink and stuff, but I was like the house parties. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I stayed like, and still now, if I go out, man, I look at the time yeah, and it's 10.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, shit, yeah. it's getting late. Yes. Like I wake up at three and go to bed at eight, eight at night. I'm an yeah. early riser. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so... With with finishing that story off, that's how I moved there, and I pre I I pretty much lived in the states in North Carolina till I was twenty nine. Wow, which which was pretty much a year before COVID, so it all Fuck. worked out perfectly. So wow. how did, did how did you go about getting a green card? Or um, a visa so or I was just on visas. Yeah. Um, the very f- first sponsor, proper sponsor I ever got was Nike. Sick. And, it, and it's like... Just a small you know, little brand. This is one thing now that I'm older, like I th- I knew it was cool as a kid, but all I was like is, all right, one spot. I just, I did, it's not like that I didn't care. It was awesome. It was yeah. made all the yeah. shoes and yeah. obviously they paid me a bit of money and did all the visas and my flights and stuff. Sick. But it was just like, it never really clicked to yeah, me. Yeah. Like, And now I'm older, I'm like... Fuck, Fuck, man! Yeah. I probably definitely would have dropped that card a bit more. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I, I don't do that. I'm, ne- I'm not that guy. I'm yeah, being yeah, a trader yeah. or no, I try. I've never done that. I've never been into that. Yeah. But now I'm older. I'm like, man, I yeah. was like, I definitely would have dropped the Nike card a yeah. little bit more, especially if I was 16. Yeah. yeah. So well, like, they tell you to just and do I it. And I wasn't that good with girls when I was younger, so it was probably would have been a lot cooler. Like 16 Nike, yeah. but um, tick of approval from the ladies. Yeah. Oh, that's two from two. <laughs> my missus doesn't listen to this. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's fucking so cool, man. So they've sorted all your visa. Um, and because you're young, like you're just growing up, you just be like, oh, this is how it is. Yeah. You know, this is what happened. Yeah, yeah. didn't, and didn't know like, any better. Yeah, because you haven't had like a full-time job. You haven't yeah. had anything else. So I will go back a little bit before I moved to the States. Yeah. Mm. I actually, same deal. It's not like my dad... Gave me the money. Yeah. Um, I worked a job six days a week 
Um, Sunday through Friday, wake up at 3 a.m., work till 10, just in a uh, fruit and veg market, oh, yeah. packing pack orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, d- I didn't go over there with, like, I didn't move move over there. I yeah. moved over there with your money, the money from saved. the summertime. Yeah. Mm. Move over there because seasons are opposite. So go there in March because you don't want to – North Carolina's freezing cold Ooh, yeah. in the winter. Yeah. So you yeah. do, most most people in North Carolina either go home whether in like to a family in California or all the Aussies go back to Oz. Yeah. So the, normally I'd be there from March through till October, November when the season finished and it start to get cold. Yeah. So I, I worked as much as I could, saved as much money, and I was – I budgeted so hard yeah. and made sure that money lasted. Of course, dad helped me out a little bit, yeah. but it's not like dad was like, here's 20 grand. Or yeah. it was almost like, do you need a little bit of help? Son? Yeah. Do you, yeah. you know, like, and that's a thing you've got. That's, that's passion. That that, yeah. you know, like that motivation behind you to get there, but you, you had to earn it. You, could, you weren't just gifted it by well, your parents. And you knowing that you're waking up at three to 10 cause that money is going to be going towards. Yeah. 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 And yeah, it worked yeah. perfect. Cause I'd get home at 10 have a couple of hour nap and then I could ride all afternoon. Yeah. So it was absolutely perfect. Surprised you weren't doing the paper rounds on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I would have if that, that job didn't come about. But yeah. I, I did that um, for like three years until I started making enough money to where I didn't need to come home to work. Yeah. Mm. So cool. every you know time I'd get home, like from the first couple of trips, like I'd still make money at contests and stuff, mm. but it would go straight into the savings. Yeah. So then when I came home for the next summer, that would be the start of my savings and then I would yeah, work yeah, and put up. that into the savings and then I would sit there a couple of months before, find out how if I needed to work a little bit yeah. longer. So I the fortunate part about that is I, I understood the importance of saving money, budgeting, yeah. not wasting it on stupid stuff. And that's mm. probably hard, most of the reason I didn't want to go out and party because yeah. I'm like, that's – most of the money, like buying yeah, beers and yeah. taxis and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's not like you missed out on having fun. No, like, not, yeah. not fucking, at all. Because then yeah. the, the, then at the contest, it'd be yeah. a sick after party Hunt, and the stuff was free. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll go more into this with Nitro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, then I, I took advantage of that more than anyone fuck else. Oh. To where I got, they bullied me, like, uh, tied ass. I'm like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. fuck <laughs> you. If it's and, free. <laughs> and now I'm older, they're like, fuck. Man, I wish I did that shit. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll get into that. We but, can get into that in a bit. But that's such a good um, a, example of someone just earning what they're trying to, to get to instead of like just and yeah, also it, yeah. yeah and and also just um, baby steps like reinvesting the money you make back into the the, the process. Mm. Like well, we try and do that with the podcast. Yep. and I recommend that with anyone in any sort of business. Yep. Any money you make at the start, reinvest it back into your business, reinvest it back in your passion, yep. and get better equipment or whatever, better training, whatever yeah. it is is yep. um and that you're the perfect example oh, of that. thank you yeah that's um, really yeah it's pretty switched on but I, I did i did that so i did that for like three years even with it like i was only 16 nike won't pay me much mm. um and then it was kind of like 18 19 it was kind of getting to the stage where i hadn't quite made it like yeah. of course like nike's cool but i mean like made it in terms of like you want to be Stress making free. top three at contests yeah. And, yeah, yeah and i still hadn't reached that peak had a good couple of podiums, but no, first, a long way off that. Yeah. Um, and then I remember it was like, I was like either not, I think I was 19 and I remember exactly, I was driving with my old man on Abernethy Road, past all the, the, wheat, the wheat mills. And uh, I said, all right, dad, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it another solid year. Maybe I was 20, another yeah. solid year. I was like, I've had the most amazing time of my life. If I have to come back and get a job, <laughs> I'm like, I really don't even give a shit. Yeah. I was like, like yeah, I've it's been worth it. Crazy. Like I, the guys that were on my wall yeah. growing up as a kid, I they're know. now my friends yeah. and I can tell them to get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm the, one of the top guys still is now Daniel Durs. He was like on top for a long time. He was my room. Like I lived with him. He wow. let me stay at his house. Like all this stuff. It was, I couldn't believe it. So it's I was like. Pinch me sort of stuff. So That's I was like, cool. if if nothing, next year I'm going to give it everything I have. If it doesn't work out, I'll, you know, start trying to look into maybe getting a job. Fruit and, and veg packing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so um, that's kind of the next year I went back. So this is where the nitro story kind of starts. Yeah, cool. Because before you start that, yeah. it's just bugging me. And I, if I don't say it now, Go for it. Um, 
the BMXing that you're doing, is it freestyle like tricks or is it racing? Yeah, freestyle BMX. Yeah, okay. So like rams, like yeah, yeah, yeah. flips, double flips. Because there's, there's racing as well, right? Yeah. Which is the stuff that's got to the Olympics. Yeah, so that I think that got in maybe two or three Olympics ago. Yeah. But the BMX freestyle, the freestyle is what... Now. Yeah. That's uh yeah cool. The, cool, the cool stuff. Yes, both. It's crazy. There's some of the racing people have just as bad injury yeah. injuries. They're fuck, they fly. It's man. crazy. Yeah. Mm. So crazy. Nitro Circus come in. Yeah. So, um, a lot of the guys that I rode with Aussies, they were on Nitro. A couple of them were on Nitro Circus already. Yeah. Um, and I was friends with them. Um, just from like being, I guess, acquaintances, yeah. riding with Same each other, scene. seeing them at contests. Yeah. Um, and that was back in the day when Nitro was an Australian, like owned by, an it was an Aussie company. Yeah. And um, I remember I was home one day and, and I remember waking up, man, and I had all these, like so many missed calls from all these guys, like all the guys on Nitro that are Aussies that wow. I don't normally speak to. And it was like seven o'clock on a Sunday. Yeah. And I was like, were you in America or here? I was here yeah. and I was like, someone's died. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I was like, why would these people be calling me? Yeah. I, I thought the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So I call anyway. Thank God no one died. Yeah. Mm. And um, they were like, oh man, they um, Nitro, like there's a, in Nitro, it's a show and there's kind of segments. And, but the best part of the show, it's like the big air segment. So yeah. it's like pretty much you get two jumps and you go for whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> and it's yeah. like, it's it it's like I watch it now after all the progression. And I just think this isn't this isn't real. Yeah, it's it's mind blowing. But uh, they're like I was really good at uh, spinning and I was really good at doing ten eighties and not many people could do ten eighties back then. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean spinning is in like rotating? Yeah, rotating. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I uh, so Nitro Circus for anyone listening that doesn't know, it's pretty much we've got this fifty foot roll in. Uh, you go down it. It's uh, now it's about I think it's about a sixteen foot kicker yeah. with like a forty foot gap, and it's just it's a Massive. it's a mega ramp. <laughs> so it's just a, it's like a one one trick hit jump. Yeah. So and it's still fucking terrifying hitting the thing. Like honestly, if I haven't ridden it for a while, I'm I'm terrified. Wow. Um. So they were like, they want you to come on and do a show, and. 1080 in the big air segment because no one had done it before and Nitro's all about like let's do things no one's done before yeah and it's crazy I look back now and I was like I, re I remember thinking I don't know if I really want to do this because I wanted to ride contests yeah, yeah I just like I wanted to be a contest guy that's what I wanted to do yeah and I a lot of people that do Nitro it's like they kind of leave the contest side of things yeah mm. and I'm like I don't know if I want to go down this path yeah so I remember I said, oh, I'm not sure. And they said, look, we'll fly you out, bring your bike. If you want to ride the ramp, see how you go. If not, just enjoy the weekend. Oh, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Where was the show? It was, Sun, I believe it was Gold Coast or Sunshine Coast. Cool. Um, so I went out there and, I, of course, I, I rode the ramp and I um, they wanted me to try the 1080. And I rode the show and I tried, but not sure I don't care if you crash. Like, yeah. Pick, yeah. People like you crashing more than what they like. <laughs> they they, they can pay yeah. you to come and see you do something cool and roll away. They uh, want to come see you crash and shit and, yeah, uh, yeah. and get hurt. Like it, it's crazy how that works. But so there's no real pressure. Yeah, you know, it's just being there and trying. And um, people now that I've been on for 12 years, Nitro is not one of those things where you come and and you're on. It's like they'll bring in a lot of people just to do one show. Or yeah. So I never thought anything of it. Yeah. No. Did, so you didn't land the first? Did, didn't land yeah. it. But I, Were you shitting bricks? Oh, or no? oh yeah. Like I, I still can't do that trick on that ramp. It's crazy. Wow. I just can't. There's something about I can 1080 a four foot ramp. Yeah. Uh, maybe a three foot ramp depending on the steepness. But I'm pretty much 1080 anything. Yeah. But yeah. I cannot spin this ramp. It's like you go so far. You know when you just spin the front wheel and you try and move the handlebars how it feels yeah when, yeah yeah it's like the force of the front wheel spinning going so far I just I just can't do it physics because you uh, I think has anyone done it yet um, yeah oh, but are they not the way like I spin a lot different to where everyone's it's like a seven, it's like a corked front flip 1080 thing that yeah, they're doing it right because I've seen you've done you did that 10 1080s in Te 10 minutes or was it yeah or 10 1080s in 10, is that, is that 10 a minutes. world record uh I don't know. I just Surely. thought it sounded cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanted to, I got home. I had a break. I'm like 10, 10 80s, 10 minutes. I'm like, 
this will be cool. Yeah. But I, I tried to crush the first one when I went to film and I was like, oh, maybe this is bad. <laughs> but, but it worked. Um, but um, so yeah, so yeah. my friend go, my yeah. friend on Nitride got hurt. That's why they wanted me to come and do the trick as well. Mm. Um, and they said, can you come do the next show? I did the next show. And then I was walking off the field and one of the main guys came up to me and said, do you like this? You know, do you want to be a part of this? And I said, yeah, I, I love this. And he was like, all right, man. He was like, uh, we got a lot coming on, uh, coming up. That's and sick. we'd love for you to be a part of it. Wow, that's and cool. That's where it all started. And that's where Nitro really started to get big. Like that only probably do maybe, you know, 10 shows a year. And that's when it yeah. went to like 80, yeah, 90 right. shows a year, like Europe, South Africa, Japan, Saudi Arabia, like pr- yeah. pretty much everywhere. Wow. <sighs> so you're getting the... You're getting this opportunity to travel the world doing something you love. You yep. must start fucking, yeah. Well, you're already pinching yourself living with fucking these sorts of yep. people and hanging out with your people that you idolize. But yep. now you're doing it for a living, traveling the world. Yeah, and it was so. I was like, the contesting about what I was saying is, I wanted to go down that path, mm. yep. and I was right at the point to where I started doing really well, yeah. and things were, and I was like, I'm going to do both. Yeah. Oh. But it got to a point. Where I'm like, fuck this, fuck yeah. the contest. I'm yeah, like, yeah. this shit is way better. Yeah, yeah. You know, like traveling the world with your mates. Like, it's like when you're a kid at the skate park, you just try new tricks and yeah. you crash. Yeah. No one cares, and that's nitro. Yeah. But you could be practicing for a year for the, for X Games, yeah. And you drop in, and you crash your trick, and you you're fucked, done. and your whole, whole year's kind of ruined. So, and it's like I instantly was like, I love this more. This yeah. is way more enjoyable. Yeah. Um, and so I just. I went down that path. That's sick. Yeah. What was the first trick you landed at Nitro? Uh, I think it was just the, the first trick I did is just flip the ramp. Yeah. It's kind of like the safety thing. And even now, like there's one ramp that we put in and it's it's so big and you have so much time that it's easier for me to drop in and do a double flip. Wow. Because it's hard to just do one. And, like, and stop your rotation. And, and stop. And because of these ramps now, like triple thing, triple backflips are like a normal thing. That's yeah. insane, you know, People mate. are doing them in practice and all this crazy stuff. So, so insane, man. So, so do you get dizzy? Uh, uh, you sure? No. Nah? No, nah, not really. Uh, 10, 1080 is in 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit dizzy, but yeah. no, it, it's, it's one jump. You got to climb all, all these stairs, which are a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, keeps you fit with your bike. With, with your bike, yeah. With Surely your bike. they invent a fucking lift. Nah, sure. uh, well, 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 <laughs> I guess that's the joys of having a yeah. motorbike. We always pay out the motor, yeah. motor guys on tour. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it kind of um, everyone on their trip. It's different now with how the sport is because everyone's so amazing and everyone can do everything. Like yeah. no one's he can do this trick and I can't. Like everyone can pretty much do everything. Yeah. So at a time that I got on. There was this guy, Andy Buckworth, and his trick was a double front flip, no hander. And yeah. there, was a, there was a little bit of a before, like before I got on Nitro or even really knew what it was. Or I, Andy used to talk. I, I like this about not being an action sports contest because yeah. I know these people won't hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so there was beef because Andy would always be like, yeah, man, this guy came on to Nitro and did my fucking trick. And, oh. and yeah, so... and there was a little bit of beef between him and this other guy that were doing the double front flip no handers. Yeah. I don't know the full story. Surely a trick But is it a had trick. to do with someone getting chosen because someone undercut the other person. As in price wise, what they're doing. Price wise. Oh. So that, so there was a lot there was almost like I could do a lot of stuff. Like when I first got it, I was good at riding box jumps. So it was yeah. like a one hit, like just do a big trick. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I could do a lot of them. That was what I was good at. Yeah. Um and so I could do a lot of this stuff, but I just didn't do it yeah. because I didn't want to upset anybody, <laughs> especially because I was new. Yeah, I didn't want to yeah. step on anyone's toes. Sounds like comedy. Like yeah. You don't want to do the same joke or the same, if someone's a music actor, later on's a music actor and they're bigger than you, yep. yeah. you go, I won't do that because yep. it steps on their toes. Yeah. And, yeah. and there is still a lot of that now in terms of if someone does something and you're going to do it, be, you're still just, but it's more like out of respect. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll do something else, man. Like you will say, like, You'll be like, hey, are you you going to do this trick? And they'll be yeah. like, yeah. And they're like, oh, all right. And they'll be like, why? Oh, were you going to do it? Yeah. Oh, no, you do it, man. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Whereas back then, it was like kind of... Like you, trademark. You don't don't go there. Wow. Yeah. And so... Um, it's good that the culture's changed because as a fan, you want to see people doing... Yeah. I'd like to see you do it. I'd like to see yeah. someone else that I respect do it. it like, that's how it is now. Yeah. But it wasn't back then. Yeah. So... Um, 
and because that's I, what sets him apart, right? He's like, I'm the guy yeah, that does this. Yeah, you're the 1080 dude. And now you're just easy, re- easily replaced because everyone yeah. can fucking <laughs> do it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But but I could do this double front flip no hander trick. Oh. So my very and on that the first tour was a Europe tour. Yeah, and um, I Andy's one of my best mates. Um. Now, <laughs> uh, but he actually was hurt on my first full tour. Yeah, and we were having a meeting, and the trick list came out, and in this big air segment, they had me down to do the <gasps> double front flip no hander, oh, 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 oh. and I was like, and "Man, was it Andy Buckworth?" And, and no, like I was doing the trick, but Buckworth was gone. Was Andy yeah, was yeah. gone; like right. he wasn't on tour, so they wanted me to do it. Yeah, and this is like kind of like my to- I can't say no to stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time but to I still had like I remember when that got done. I went to the athlete manager's room, knocked on his door in <laughs> private, and said, "Man, this is an amazing opportunity. Like this is really hard for me to do, but I, I can't do that trick. Yeah. I, I said I w- wasn't going to do it. Yeah." yeah. So I didn't do it. Oh. So I just did double front flips. So you were the cuckworth. So, but everyone was like, man, just do it. Just, yeah. just fucking do it. And I was like, I'm not doing it, man. Wow. Like, this is my first tour. I'm not going to step on anybody's toes. Yeah, nice. yeah. Um, And then... Uh, man of principle. But then we, yeah. we were kind of at the end of tour. It was my birthday. It was my birthday. We're in Amsterdam. Wow, yeah. And um, I, I remember I went to drop in to do a double front flip. And... To, oh, to, I was that high, my hands came off. But to be, like, I, I'm, I'm weird with stuff. Like it was honestly easy for me to do a double front flip, no hander. It's yeah. like, there's something about like pausing, yeah. taking your hands off and having a look. It's yeah. easier than just snapping in and thinking, "Fuck, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? I have no idea." Shit, there's the ground. Open up. Yeah. yeah. And um, one of my best mates now, Matty Wyatt, he was like, "Man, he's like, fuck him, just do it, just do it." And I, I dropped in. And I did it. Fuck yeah! Um, and I I got called in to <laughs> like the 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 main o- like the CEO the owner who made Nitro like called me in, mm. and he obviously knew that I said no to doing it. And um, I he actually I it was my first tour. I wasn't getting paid what everyone else paid, which was almost like a another thing like don't come on Nitro unless you know don't ride for. You know, because they don't want to be undercut and then yeah. be cheaper again. And yeah. I mean, just like any business yeah. or company, like you know, fight, if someone's like coming UFC and does it, yeah. if, if someone does the same job yeah. as you for mm-hmm. cheaper and loves it, like yeah. it's just the way it works. It's not BMX or action sports; it's life. But um, yeah. so he came in, and that was another reason why I didn't want to do it. Um, and he actually put me on the pay everyone else was. Oh, sick! Oh, wow. So it, because it all, of that, be, because of that. So I'm oh, be- I, hang on because you. Refused it all because I, you did it hell sick think, on the last one. I think the whole story of it. Yeah. Like, okay. didn't want to do it, held out, yeah. did it perfectly, didn't crash. Yeah. And then um, it was, sorry, Andy, fuck you, man. I'm doing <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what, what was your relationship with, like, of the owner? Had you met him before? Um, or yeah. Was he, like- Mike, Mike Porra, he, um, he was. He w- like it, it was uh, he wasn't around at every show. Yeah. But like it it was you know he I mean he's made it what it was yeah. really he's um, uh he's not a part of it anymore it's gone through a couple of owners and now it's a u.s company right. and they're in california and um so, but um so when he made it was he a, a bmx or a moto guy or just he just had nah, just I th- a good business so thing? um nitro circus was started with like i think most people know who travis, travis pastrana, pastrana is yep. yeah um so it was like back in the day it was like pastrana and and his cousin, like street bike, Tommy and yeah. Jolene, it was just a bunch of them filming videos in their backyard. Yeah. yeah. And then I, um, I think I'm, I'm sure Travis would have done something, but it was kind of like my, uh, Pora was the one that kind of helped bring it right. to yeah. like a live action sports show. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those clips and stuff back yeah, in the day. 100%. But, um, when I was growing up, it was, all, it was always crusty demons. Yeah. So, like, so, oh, yeah. oh, that's where, okay. So he, I think he used to own, cr- that's where he, yeah, right. so he owned Krusty's okay. and a lot of the old guys, motorbike riders that were on Krusty mm. came over to Nitro, right. but I'm like, you, Krusty's a badass yeah, moto yeah. dude, yeah. like heavy, yeah. you know, like, and that's why a majority, like a big part of mm. why they changed from Krusty's to Nitro right. is because they wanted to change it into a more family orientated show. Yeah, yeah. Fun. They didn't yeah. want the you know, drinking and all, all this yeah. associated all. Yeah. with it. Yeah. And um, so they changed. That was 
the direction. Yeah, they see, went my with cousins, oh, I know my co- we call them cousins, but they he got offered to ride with them, but his mum was like, he was fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. She's like, no way, yeah, <laughs> not until yeah. a few more years because they were just party animals. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that yeah. Were, some of the stories I've I heard like. We're, like it's not like especially now on nitro it's not like that most people have families and kids yeah. like most people don't even drink anymore yeah mm. like it's pretty like just tame in the, cocaine in, in, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's, it's so, like so tame in the change rooms after the shows because yeah. most of the motor guys don't drink anymore because they're a lot older yeah, yeah. and you know fuck so, being hung over doing big air as well yeah like. so that yeah. was my one rule yeah. is I would never drink before a show fuck yeah. no and I broke it a couple of times <laughs> and it was the worst oh. thing I ever did man yeah right and, and is, it, that, is that like drinking like doing it pissed no like, no uh, nev- no ne- never never would have a drink I couldn't even now like I think I've done it maybe twice I'd have one beer yeah and I just Mentally, I'm like, if I get hurt, oh, yeah. mm. I'm going to blame it on the drink. Yeah. yeah, And then I'm like, alcohol is what did this. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. would, I just couldn't handle that. Yeah. <laughs> so even, yeah. so I need my alcohol. So even <laughs> if I just say like everyone's hanging out by the pool that aren't riding and someone has a beer at like 10 o'clock and you're still not riding until 6 o'clock at night, yeah. I still couldn't do it. Yeah. It was just something mentally yeah, I just yeah. but could I, I think that's like though. that with, with almost... Almost anything like that you're trying to do professionally. Yeah. You begin, you're, you're like, uh, even if you take comedy, for example, you mm. feel like, oh, having those beers and stuff, it's part of the vibe. But yeah. then I, I've seen, I'm seeing all the, the better comedians around. They're like, no, no, no. Or oh, Frenchie last week saying mm. he doesn't drink before a fucking show. Yeah. I guess it's the same with you, you're not drinking. You want to put on a good performance. You want to do everything you can. And then after you can have your relax and, and you yeah. can enjoy yourself. But yeah, uh, it does become less fun and more of a job. Uh, well, what do you mean? But like, in so, as in, like, so if you're taking it very, you're taking it very seriously, yes. obviously. Yeah. So does that da, does that eventually take away that initial shine, that initial like, ah, oh, this is actually just fun? No, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So that's why now looking back, and I I don't regret everything, anything. Yeah. I did everything perfectly. But like you do look back a little bit now and be like, oh, I wish I eased up a little bit. But then I think I might not be where I am now yeah, yeah, if yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I took it like I was so nervous before shows mm. because I'm like, I want to ride well yes. and impress yeah. Yeah. like Nitro and, and make sure that even though we're all mates and we're here riding, I want to be the guy that lands my stuff. I want to yeah. be the guy doing new tricks. Yes. I want to, you know, like, so there was always like, always being nervous before shows have, or tours. Have you ever been the first... To do a trick, you know how there's always a guy. Yeah, that's the first. Yeah, I, what are you the I've first a of few, a few I've, things? I've done a few. Um, the two main ones, which I don't think anyone's done both of them, Sick. which I'm pretty proud of. One of them is a double front flip tail whip. Yeah. So it's like obviously two front flips and a tail whip is where the bike yep. goes around. And that. When do you do it? Do you front flip front straight flip, off and the then, start? Oh, so so like I so with double front flips, you don't front flip off the lip. Yeah. I pull back. And as I get to the top, I hit my brake and snap forwards. Oh. So if you miss that snap, oh my which I've done oh a couple Jesus. of times, yeah. and even if I was to go do one tomorrow, it's all I think about, which is probably the worst thing to do. Yeah. Like, but <laughs> you're always like, don't miss the snap. Yeah. Like, yeah. If your brakes aren't working, because I pull back, snap, hit the brake, and it... So you go up tail whip first. Yes. And then, and then snap and then I double use front the flip. front foot to like bring it back under and then tuck in for the second it's one. It's almost like gymnastics, man. Um, the amount of physics. I didn't even realize you pulling a brake would affect your momentum. Yeah. Why? Because it stops the, sp- the wheel spinning? Yeah, and especially because you're going so fast. When you when you pull back a little bit and your front wheel kind of is coming back, If you and then when your front wheel comes off, because your back and your front wheel's not touching, when you snap the back brake and lean forwards, it just... Wow, wow. that's cool. That's shit. You don't even think of that. It's like fucking air brakes, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, some yeah. some people roll straight off the lip, but I I, I can't even get close to a yeah yeah. Oh, that's like what, a, that's yeah. It, it's that, incredible because you're going like, up, so you have to force yourself forward at the same time. Is that counterintuitive? Because you no, wait till you go. Momentum's going, going forward. forwards. Yeah. So because your momentum's going forwards and you're going pretty fast. Mm. Yeah. Um, it it just snaps. Yeah. So, um, but so yeah, yeah. So you're first to do a tail whip double front and, flip, and that so that was probably the hardest trick that I've ever done. Mm. Like in terms of I, th- I've rolled away from it three times out yeah. of like trying for four years. Wow. Yeah. And so like on the nitro ramp, like even though it's bigger and it's scarier, like it's a lot safer because More one, it's an airbag, but mm. we have um, uh, we call it a resi that goes over the top, so you can't tell and 
does save your fall. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, man, I probably tried close to a thousand times and yeah. rolled away from three. So where, where do you wow. practice? Do you practice on that big ramp so, or in the foam pit? Yeah, so how like, do you practice that? Yeah, yeah. so at where we're at now, you just do it straight to the landing. Yeah. Um, but we also have like massive flat airbags. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of foam pits, but airbags are just easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lot low, low maintenance, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that took a long time to do. Yeah. Um, and the, the pretty cool, I've only ever landed it once in a show. Oh. And, it, and, and it was in, when we did a show here at the Optus Stadium, Fuck when my yeah. dad and my grandparents were there. And yeah. like, I haven't done one since. Wow. I ha- what I don't was think, the response uh, from the crowd? Yeah, was it, it was, a, and even like the Nitro, right? Like all your mates, cause they know like how long you've yeah. been trying. Cause I would just be in there practice, like, the, like just go and just try it. Cause I want to do it for myself. I yeah. don't even care. And that's the thing about what we do. Most of it, like it's still like, it's cool. The crowd's there, yeah. Yeah. but we just care about, you know, yeah. just Intrinsic like motivation. It, c- comedy yeah. stuff. Like you want to put a good skit together. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you want to put a good piece together. Yeah. yeah. Is, like, it, is there a, like you're trying to think together these tricks and like, nah, that's, that's not possible. And then you sort of get, nah, fuck it. I'll, I'll figure out a way to put it all together. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. But it's crazy. Cause now it's like, I can't even think it's, it's next level at the moment. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's it's so like, many variations. <laughs> yeah. It's like you see something and it's, it's, it's mind blowing, but it's just like, it, it almost doesn't register because it's on such another level now. Yeah. yeah. It's um, like when you watch a slam dunk comp and you're like, Someone's got to think yeah. of something, something yeah. like, and someone will, yeah. and then you'll be like, "What yeah. the fuck?" And then yeah. it'll be ten years before someone else does something. Yeah. What but was the other trick? Uh, the other one. This is a, and this is a really cool story as well. It's a double backflip three sixty no hander. So you do. So pretty I'm much the way I do it no is oh I, yeah. I do a three sixty backflip. Yeah. And then it's I don't know how it works, <laughs> <laughs> but, which I'll tell you the story in a minute. But it's crazy. You go off the lip, do a three sixty backflip no hander. And as soon as you put your hands on, it's like where you are in the spin, the spin just stops and you just do a straight backflip. Oh, backwards. cool. I don't understand how it works. Yeah. And I learned, it on, <laughs> I learned it on accident. Yeah, right. Oh, so, really? So I was trying to do, a tr- I was like, go to my friend's house, Jen, he's got a massive foam pit with yeah. pretty much the exact ramp. I'm like, I want to learn mm. triple backflip, no handers. Yep. And, um, Went to do a triple backflip no hander, and because I got scared, I looked, <laughs> and it I I did it first tr- on accident. <laughs> Fuck off! I did it so first cool. go, so I've never done it without a no hander. I wow. can only do a double backflip oh, three sixty no wow. hander. I cannot do a double backflip three sixty <laughs> on its own. <laughs> and every time I think like it, there's been a big break between the tour, like COVID. I hadn't yeah. done it for like sixteen months, and yeah. I'm like, Fuck, I'm scared. I, I'm like. Did it first go on accident. Obviously, yeah. I know what I'm doing now and how I did it. Yeah. But anytime I think I'm like, well, I did it. I- Is there any shit like that happens where you go up and like something goes crazy and you just land and you've done a 360 fucking I mean, that reverse was, that nollie exactly thing? Yeah, what like, it was. yeah. 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 Uh, there's not many things not many that things can like do, that. do that. And I just, I. I, st- I don't under- don't understand. What yeah. about doing a? <laughs> That's fine. Has anyone, That's good, though, I reckon. Has anyone done like a dinky down the ramp? Yeah, so, up, yeah, so flip, change positions. So there's, there's a oh, part fuck. in the show on on the BMX where um, Jed will go down. He's like a big Kiwi bloke. You know, and orchard, and that's all <laughs> we do that all the time. Get through. I spoke to him this morning. It's funny always. Cheers. Yeah. Um, so, and now uh, Curtis, he's probably the smallest onto him. He'll grab onto Jed's waist and go down on the pegs, and Fuck. they'll just, and they'll do a flip. Yeah, right. So that and uh, and th- there's a part on the motorbike side where they the max they've done five people. On a motorbike. Oh, oh my god. god! Five. Yeah. So and like, it's like that. I used to get on the back with my cu- the cousin that got asked to ride for Krusty's man, yeah. and he had a decent size jump. It's probably like from here to the end of the room, yeah. and I was on the back. That's about. And he we were doing it. It's fucking shitting bricks, meters. man. Just wow. Goes, like I'm tr- putting all my trust. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. Fuck that with five. The person that's in charge. Yeah. Mm. Was a jid. No, it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't uh, but I, I've actually, I've done it before just to do it where there was four of us. I was like, screw it. I yeah. want to do it. Yeah. And it was, it's just different because you can't do anything. Yeah. You got no control. You can't do it. And Fuck, I hate that. Um, there was one show where they totally messed up and um, it was Cam Sinclair who was the F Max rider. And one of the, one of the people like tweaked their head oh. and threw and Cam fell off the back of their bike and just sent these guys, Ooh. just oh, completely no. missed the ramp. Goodbye. And just 
fuck off. Off the side. One sides. guy shattered both his legs. The other guy oh shattered both God. his wrists. Were they guests or Ge- what? Guests. Like... Uh, not not pl- uh, riders, but like uh, pla- pla- uh, uh, <laughs> volunteers. People, yeah, volunteers. That's one. Yeah, they were volunteers. Wow. Yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, yeah. Well, well, that's a good segue into your gnarliest injuries. You have to have got a few. Oh, surely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Are you put together by pop sticks or no, what? I, I think I've had a pretty good run. Yeah. Um, I, Touch wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. coming to the end of it, so yeah. I have had a good run. Uh, I've done. In one, my tib, fib, and ankle. All that was one that. That was a big one. Mm. That was probably one of the. No, it probably was the biggest setback I've ever had. It was yep. my first injury during nitro. Or uh, no, um, nothing wood. like nitro. The cr- these crazy rants is stupid stuff. Yeah, same Touch deal. Wood. That's yeah. definitely wood, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, n- n- always, but all good. Yeah, right. Nitro. Wow. It's always when I'm doing stupid shit. Yeah, like skate, skate park, like doing, you know, like something small, like yeah. ten, ten eighties. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, like honestly, like just something stupid. You'll just go to do a tap, and your front wheel will clip, and just uh, stupid stuff. But yeah. um, that was a big hit. Um, I got. You was know, it? Um, you land like you you put your foot just down? put my foot out. Yeah, you know, right. The, the the number one thing you don't you just if you can't get out of it, you just hold on. You yeah. just take the hit. But yeah. I I put my leg out, snap my. I got a um, rolled up my whole leg, oh. uh, eight eight screws, yeah. uh, two pins in the ankle, and then of course like separating, dislocating shoulders, yeah, um, tearing AC joints. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to you about that prior. Is that sort of like trying to brace and it can't yeah. like yeah yeah. And, yeah, and you just can't. It's one of those because it heals quick. It does well compared to a lot of other stuff. Yes, yeah. Uh, it was almost that thing to where it just gets worse and worse and worse because once it slips out, it done. keeps then slipping it out. just yeah. keeps going. But I, I've had a pretty good run with that. Um, broke my jaw, both sides of my now. jaw in Fuck. in one place, and like it was hitting the handles or something. Uh, or yeah, bars got me, and um, oh. that was on a that was on a motorbike. I fell on the bike, came on, got me underneath oh, from the full shit. face, oh, knocked fuck. me out for what like uppercut. five ten uh, people. People thought I was dead. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was out, yeah. like completely out for like five, ten minutes. Was well, that much pain? Um, on it, on it, I think I've been pretty good with pain. Like, man, I probably the adrenaline. Yeah, mm. I remember waking up, like smiling, yeah. and having a laugh at the back. <laughs> Obviously, in a bit of pain, but yeah. I think it's just the bad injuries to where it just cuts. Yeah, a lot of the nerves. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, uh, I've spoken to a few guests about this who put themselves in life-threatening situations, but you put yourself in very dangerous, yeah. potentially death. Uh, deathly, death, yeah, deadly situations yeah. where, you know, your mindset must be, you can't even think of that. I guess you can't have that in the back of your mind, can you? you no, just have to be not like, at all. And and it's one thing I have been, I think, a lot more now of. Obviously, age mm. and like I, I never thought about, um, like when I was right. I remember I used to text my dad on on a plane when I was headed home or something after a trip, just saying. Hey, just let you know if this plane crashes and goes down, I'm so happy, man. The best <laughs> life ever. Like, and oh I, I never used to. All I, I just, I was so happy. Yeah. yeah. Like nothing. Like if I died, I just, I didn't care. Like I know that sounds pretty arrogant in some kind well, of way. Has a half people pipe, might so happy that's. Caesar, <laughs> but I just didn't care. I yeah. was like so happy that if a freak out, like life was so good, yeah. and I had the most am- amazing experience. I couldn't believe. You know what was happening. The in my gratitude life. that you had for yeah, what you experienced. Yeah, hundred percent. And mm. I always did that stuff. Like I, I'm a bit of a journal guy, and I always done that stuff. And mm. so I was also always very appreciative of what was given to me, and I never took things for granted. Yeah. And I always made the most of things. So, um, yeah, I, I just at that time, you just I never cared. And injuries. The worst thing about getting hurt is thinking, what am I like? If I broke something, the first thing I think about is what tour am I going to miss out on? Yeah. I'd start counting the weeks in my head and thinking mm. of the next trip and yeah. what cool things I have coming up. Like yeah. that's the worst bit. Yeah. Do they have insurance for you if you get injured? You uh, get I some like, kind Yeah, of you get your, you make sure you got your own right. insurance, yeah. especially in the States. Does yeah. it also like, because what I'm finding now when I get injured now, for example, in football, it's not the missing out on football anymore. Yeah. It's the missing out. I don't know if you've got kids or anything like that. No, but no, for no, me, yeah. it's like missing out on... Like I can't run with my daughter when yeah. she's riding a bike or something like that. So yeah. my mindset's changed. Mine yeah. was 
it was like, fuck, I'm going to miss six weeks of footy, yeah. the thing I love the most. But I now don't think it's Todd's dad can ride when he's yeah. on his bike. <laughs> <laughs> so following him yeah, down the ramp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, so my mindset's changed now to just general life. Yeah. I want to be able to go for a run. Yeah. I want to be able to go do this. I yeah. guess to a point now, you'll be getting to that point. where, uh, And I am at that point, but then I still do it. So I try yeah. not to think about it. But yeah. now it's more like, a, I think, is this worth it? Yeah. You know, like if it's, if it's something that yeah. I really want to do and uh, like it's it's going to be worth the reward, I yeah. guess, like I won't not go for it. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, like if we're somewhere and there's an epic crowd there and mm. it's a big show, like yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. do what I need to do. Yeah. Mm. But like sometimes like if you're not really feeling it and, you know, it's not a big crowd and, you know, it's just a little show, like I'll just yeah. be like, I'll – this isn't worth the risk. Yeah. Whereas before when I was younger, I'm like one person who cares. Let's, <laughs> let's, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. go for it. So what, it, uh, yeah. What, I guess where does it go from here? Because yeah, obviously are you on the tail end now or are you still going to, uh, yeah, you know? I, I am on the tail end. I always said 33, yep. like, um, and obviously in action sports, it is, you know, there is a certain yeah. limited time that you have. Yeah. yeah you got a lifespan. And, yeah. and I saw a lot of guys that we all looked up to that were just, Blowing their cash. Yeah, so, right. do you like, mean when you say lifespan? Do you mean like as in physically you can't keep up, or just like mentally? I'm uh, done. I'm done with this game. Physically, oh. and it's just like anything. Like you know, the guys now, the top guy. It's like it's incredible. But now you, I'm looking, and there's this twelve year old, uh, six year old kid. Yeah. Who, and like he's on it. Like it's incredible. He's blowing everyone. He's the, the crap. He's doing. He's doing some stuff I can't even do. He's six. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't look real. <laughs> So like it's probably a robot. I, I feel like it's gonna get even young because like you know the best dudes now a lot of them that are winning are you know twenty seven to thirty two which mm. is pretty old if you think about it compared to a lot of other sports. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's just gonna go younger and younger yeah. to mm. where most of the people are gonna like making top ten are gonna yeah. be between. Mm. You know, so you said that 20s. the older blokes have blown their cash and haven't really looked. Yeah, after. Uh, not every like a lot of people are smart, but like there was a few few people that I saw and I obviously. I, I was lucky enough that I got the working experience and understood mm. making money and saving it. Mm. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, I just made sure that I saved everything that I could. Like I never bought a fan. Like I think the car I bought was like four grand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I just always still from being as tight as I was when I was 16, mm. I live that. I still live that way now. Yeah. Mm. Like, you know, it's like I still go out and have fun and do what I need yeah. to do when I want to. Yeah. But I still live that way now. Like, I was so happy back then. I just haven't changed anything because yeah. I yeah. don't live within your like means. That. Did you guys get paid a, like a weekly wage it was, or something? Or it, was it like. A so, with the contest riders, like, you've a lot of people, like, you have either Monster, Rockstar, Red Bull, and yeah. you get paid, you know, a salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, um, and then clothing brands, bike yeah. brands. It's all like a year contract, two year contract, five, yeah. whatever it is. But with Nitro, we got paid per show. Right. And um, some people at the start, they were on a salary to run certain, you know, a helmet and yeah. stuff like that. But yeah. it changed. But we just got paid per show. Mm. So you so definitely don't want to get so injured. It's, and, yeah. and not even that. But I was like, I don't know. At least if you're like one of the number one dudes in the sport, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. you're like, I know as long as things and I ride well and stay fit and healthy, I've got another four years to... Nitro could have ended mm. the next tour. Yeah. You know, so I never knew where it was going to go. Yeah. So um, I just, and this is back to the um, story I was saying, how I used to go made fun of. I used to take uh, takeaway containers to the catering at Nitro. <laughs> wow. And then everything, like a, a, all the alcohols free, yeah. food, like everything. Yeah. Wow. And You're the original FIFO. And, and, FIFO and, Nitro. Yeah, right. And, and I, I took advantage. I would take Tupperware containers and, the beer is back after the show. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, why wouldn't you? If it's there. I know, but like, that like, just like, reminds me of like Vince had... Vaughn at Google. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can we take it? Yeah. <laughs> what did I not even want? <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's funny now because that was a long time ago and now uh, things are different. And, and now I, a lot of my mates that are a couple of years older than me, they're doing it. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, man, I wish I did this. And now I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, ha ha, told you. <laughs> yeah. Should have made the most of yeah. it. Um, yeah, because wouldn't you rather just have a good time, not be like live within your means yeah. and, and be mm. happy? That's that, that adage of like, I'd rather be, uh, you know, happy in a Toyota than crying yeah. in a Ferrari. And, and I never yeah. knew, like, the one I, I bought one nice car once, it was stupid, but um, I was in a, like, I wasn't in that place, I was in a good place when I got it, but then I think I, 
I, I sold it like 10 months later. It was during this COVID period. Like that's oh, how long it's, it's been. Yeah, yeah. And I sold it for more than what more I bought than, it yeah, 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 yeah. for. And I put like 15,000 Ks on it. Yeah. So it was perfect. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of, yeah, there's there's not long you can do it. So you got to be smart with what you're doing. Mm. And I always said I wanted to leave it before it left me. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I didn't want to get a call from Nitro one day or a spo- and sponsor and be like, mm. hey, this is done and be like, fuck, what am I going to do now? Yeah. yeah. So like I, from a very young age, from like probably even before Nitro, I was like reading books, trying to figure out what I would do. Mm. Like, and yeah. obviously really, if you're right, and the other thing you can start, like start a business or yeah. um, a brand or something. And, and w- with Nitro, Inflatable airbags came on the scene probably about eight years ago and it changed everything yeah. in terms of like it's fast, easy, you can crash and you can get back up. Like they they literally act like a normal ramp. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, and the people that were doing them for Nitro, they were very, very expensive and they weren't affordable. Unless, like because they, they were a Hollywood company. Yeah. yeah. So it was like Nitro obviously went out and sourced them. Yeah. And yeah, that's exactly what it was for. And so, and I'm like, Imagine, like, no one can afford these in the backyard. Yeah. I was like, this would be a great idea. Mm. So um, I was like, I'm, this is what I'm going to try and do. And um, it was, uh, yeah, it, it, without getting too much into it, just, it took off very well. And Sick. obviously I know a lot of people in the industry that yeah. couldn't get these anyway. So now we have this company and they're like, can I get one? And yeah. What's it called? Give it a uh, shout it's, out. It's, it's, so this, it's called... DD airbags. Just Daniel Delby airbags. <laughs> and, and That's cool, what I look for on Tinder too. <laughs> the cool story is I remember telling my dad about it mm. and, um, you know, same deal. Oh, cool, man. Like, what are yeah. you going to call it? Double like, D airbags. But so like, no, but pe- people used to call me because T O double D. Yeah. Right. This one announcer that I used to do shows for all the time <laughs> used to call me double D. He's like T O double D. That was my rap and, name. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Oh, that's why you said that. Oh, wicked. <laughs> my initials Daniel Delby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just say you own, yeah. own that. Uh, but yeah. uh, so it was like this guy just always double D, double D. And, um, my dad was like, and it was a while ago, so I can't believe my dad even said it. He goes, oh, what are you going to call it? Double D airbag or something? And I yeah. said, I'm going to call it that. Yeah. I'm like, so if, if something does happen with it, I can say, you named it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, no, it, it started off well, like, couldn't, re- like, didn't expect it to go as well as what it did. Yeah. And then COVID happened. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the skate parks in the world shut down. Yeah. So people wanted Fuck. ramps. Yeah. So it just kind of took off to another level. So uh, when you say the airbag, are you making the ramp from air? Like an airbag Yeah, so ramp? It's, it's, it's the whole thing's an inflatable. So you roll it up, you can chuck it in the back of your... And of, you've got the lip and, no, and so the you, landing? The, the or lip is, uh, you've got to make the lip, got yeah. to make the ramp. Yeah. Um, so it's just the landing that blows it's up. which is blow the, up landing. Which is the hardest thing to build, yeah. move. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. the most expensive. Yeah. Mm. And um, so then COVID happened. And as I said, now it's, it's cool because all this stuff that happened, like... In my earlier days of BMX, like I can't believe I'm meeting this guy, and I yeah. can't believe I'm mean, the the people that are buying the bags, like not Nitro buy bags off me. I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I I that was, I find people say, "What do you do for a living?" I say, "Sell, sell bags. bags." You get a bag. <laughs> you get a bag. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I say that all the time. I, I when I'm out, sometimes yeah. I'm at a party. I'll say, "Oh yeah, the bag's going really well." <laughs> <laughs> Someone will look at me. Uh, Shit's not true, but, boy. <laughs> but it's crazy because now it's like, man, the, these people that I still didn't really get to meet. On a personal level, these all these people they come to us now, yeah. yeah. And it's like I get my enjoyment, like I sit in front of a computer for most of the day now, and yeah. I love that. That's where, like, yeah. I got another place to put, you yeah. know, my energy. If and you ever get into blow up girlfriends, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can make some double D I was gonna say, oh, but it turned out double D. You know, that's what it probably a lot of people yeah, think. Yeah. Double D blow up. Big, yeah, big, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's so fucking cool. I want to ask you a bit more about that because I am obsessed with learning how people go from idea or idea to concept Mm. to actual working. Hundred percent. Yeah. Did you? Because it's so insightful. You you get you're already pre planning ahead. How did you? How did you go from I want to make this uh, achievable? So did you find out from Hollywood who made those bags? And then did you hit them up and you were like, I'm gonna 
Here's my prototype. Like, how do you do that? Without That's getting in, into it too much, the, on the on the level yes, of give it, us your obviously I, I had <laughs> I had no like just like anything no experience. I had no experience. Yeah. yeah, um, and I I just had to figure out a way not to make them a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and make them more affordable. Yeah. for people, and I was like, and how do I safe, do this? So obviously, once I kind of got the the product sorted, um, it, I maybe I got lucky with it. It just it was almost perfect. Yeah. It did exactly what I wanted to do. There was, there'd did, been was it, did you have a prototype where they sent you it? Yeah, and but, and, like, yeah. but it, this is the cool, cool, and same day I was telling, saying to you before yeah. that I don't normally talk about this stuff because it, I try and keep it private yeah. from, yeah. but this is a different audience. And yeah. so I... I just find it fascinating that you've got this idea and you've, you, you find the right manufacturer, the right person to create a prototype. Mm. Like you would have had no idea how to do and, it and you just work it out as you go even now uh six or seven years in like there's still like every other week uh, there's something yeah and i but well, like, even building a business yeah like turning yeah. it into a just company is, it out i guess it, yeah and um but the how the idea came about mm. re- was back to the nitro thing i remember i got a call one it was like could have waited till after the new year i think it was like a couple of days before christmas and yeah. i got a call from the athlete manager i think it was 2016 and he goes, hey, man, I'm really sorry when you're not going to be on the next couple of tours. Yeah, right. And I'm like, that that was the call. Exactly yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. You don't know when it's going to happen. Wake up call, yeah. Mm. I never missed any of the tours. I, I still haven't missed a tour since. Mm. And I was like, okay, I've got to find something else that I love to do. Just mm. in case, and, yeah. And without, like, I I was like, I really like, like, I, I, I've done a bit of charity work before and I just I really like that and I didn't know where that would go. So I'm like, I'm going to hit up the local hospital and I'll see if they want me to come in and do some tricks for the kids. Yeah. And from that, that's when this lady was like, hey, can you bring in a full-size ramp? Mm. And yeah, I was right. like, well, I don't really have a full-size ramp for yeah. people to do it yeah. or, you know, the money to buy oh, something well, yeah. like that. And yeah. then that's kind of ha- why the airbag thing really cemented that's in. That's cool. Mm. So, so then, from, some, from the good heart so <laughs> comes yeah. the business. Uh, and that's yeah. why I take... Like any opportunity that comes, yeah. My way, like I'm always like, you don't know what could happen. Oh. Yeah. Like if if it's just something simple, like someone hits you up that you don't really know to go have a coffee, mm. go have the coffee. Like yeah. you never know what can happen. Or do a podcast. Pro- that yeah. same thing, I, ne- I never say like oh, there's probably a bad thing to yeah. say. You <laughs> might take advantage of yeah. it, but yeah. I'll never say no. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the approach that's I take really cool, to everything. Man. So it's funny you say that because we are looking for a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty niche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, yeah, uh, like that whole, the whole move into that industry is obviously – it shows that no matter what uh, the – no matter what the area – no, if you know it, if you if you know what you're um, well enough, yeah, yeah exactly. Market. You can find a way to do it. Like that's why when these people say, oh, "I have no idea where to start," I don't, I don't know what to do. This fucking Google, like, yeah. there's anything. Like people will say, um, you know, I don't know how to. Um, I seen this example on the internet the other day on a fucking reel somewhere that like they'll they'll complain saying, "I can't finish this video game. Oh, I don't know how to make this meal," and then they'll go straight to. YouTube or yeah. Google and find a way to do it. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that with your business or yeah. your passions and your things that you want to achieve in life? Yeah. That's yeah, and you're the perfect example. Like fuck it, I'll just find a way to get do it, it done. Yeah, and as I said, like I I didn't know anything, and I am st- like still st- still super open with I don't know. Like I still am trying to figure out certain things, and yeah. things are hard, and it's really hard when something goes wrong and mm. someone's unhappy. That's the hardest thing. Yeah, yeah, is like dip because it's like. Mm. you're in charge of making sure like someone's happy and yeah. I don't do what like I hate when someone's unhappy yeah. like even if it's just People a friend and they're having that. a bad day yeah. Yeah. like I don't do well with it it's the thing that I hate most I guess is yeah. dealing with people that aren't happy with something yeah and most of it's bullshit anyway. <laughs> like, get over it. like yeah. what you know but um my thing with what you're saying is that like just try like just say you want to open an e-commerce like everyone talks about e-commerce okay well I'll try an e-commerce store with selling just pick something yeah. because it, it's the same. Yeah. It's the same thing with just start with that yeah. and you don't know Where. what you'll get from that. Yeah. So like, you know, from, you know, from doing that, you might really start enjoying making the website yeah. and doing the marketing mm. and doing, but then you hate, you know, all the logistics sides of the thing. But mm. then you think, 
well, I love doing this marketing stuff. Maybe I'll yes. get into marketing. Yeah. yeah, You know, like it's not like you're starting this company and this is going to go well. You're starting it to figure out where you're going to go. Yeah. You might start, do a really shit job, but you don't really care about the product. But then mm. that's a good thing because six months later, you found something that you might think will do better. Yeah. Yeah. And same deal. You might send an email to someone one day that could change yes. absolutely everything. Yeah, it's yeah. like... It's almost like a, yeah, the movie Yes Man. Yeah. I was yeah. literally about to bring that up. And yeah. I watched that on purpose as a kick up the ass. Yeah. Because it's is it's not about literally saying yes to everything. Yeah. It's about opening your, yourself up to opportunities. Yeah. when there's Something will come from Yeah, exactly. Like and even if it's a shitty little gig where you might get fucking 50 bucks instead of your normal 150 but yes. you go, I'll go there and then from that someone in the crowd will see you and book you for a corporate and you're like if I didn't do that mm. then this other opportunity wouldn't have and presented that's what itself. it's all yep. like that that is the core of it all yeah. I think yeah like don't turn anything down mm-hmm. like depending on what it is yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but just take any any opportunity like especially if you're not there yet you can't say no to anything because you don't like you're not in the position to say no yet yeah, yeah. Mm. to that. Yes. I'm in that I'm in that m- right now before coming here. I've hit up Astor Theatre for teacher comedy night. I'm shitting bricks. I'm like, do I do, do it? it bro, I'm do like, because I'm looking at the risk. The risk is about 12 grand that I'll lose if it doesn't work. But then I'm like, I think, can I do the 700 seats? Is it going to work? And I'm like, I always think, oh my I, God, I, I think about this all the time. If I, and this is a thought I have, if I was on my bed, deathbed and I had two more hours to think mm. would I regret doing that or mm. not yeah and if I if you know straight away so I know you're obviously going to go do it I am yeah this is the thing you'll hit yeah. it out the park bro yeah. and then it'll it'll it, it, it'll create that um, worst case scenario a learning experience for you. the universe has presented you to me perfect timing to have it's this but, chat and man. it's not like I that's like the 12 of it's a lot of money but it's like this is what you love, yeah. you know. Mm. You're doing it like it's gonna. It's the experience, the same deal. The p- someone you might meet, and yeah. someone you know. That's it's the whole whole mm, thing deal it. with that. Yeah. Mm. Fuck, maybe the next up and joke we can get Todd to come and do some flips <laughs> like, <laughs> live on stage. Call, <laughs> call me a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, that's our. Uh, uh, no, uh, no. Yeah, that's a good idea. On yeah, the, at Asda, bang, do Fuck a little flip. Yeah. I, I got a couple more. Years. Have you ever done like? Um, shit indoors like in like a like a school assembly uh yeah and t- i do that still and yeah, I, right. that's my favorite thing to do that's yeah nice. I, and i i'll do it for free yeah. uh, <laughs> allegedly <laughs> like, i always go like my the school that i go trinity there's my favorite teacher as well mr yeah. maxfield fourth grade teacher um he'll hit me up once a year and i'll go in and just do yeah, a show for it. And it is my favorite thing. Yeah, love I that. love, I enjoy doing the little shows with 50 people yeah. in the stands. Yeah. Like uh, some, like a lot more than those big shows. Cause you, it's almost like when there's so many people, you don't even notice yeah. that there's all those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you do the, and I, I like, I love talking and mm. talking to people and, you yeah. know, smiling and getting a good conversation yeah. with the guy. And they're the proper, like you can actually like talk to people and people are stoked and, they, they're like, I can't believe you're talking to me. Like, I, I'm actually not that cool, but yeah. thank you. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and they might take up beer mixing and fucking spur them to, yeah. you know, try that, it themselves. Because that could, yeah, that could work out really well because you've been on the Reapers podcast yeah. before. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, the boys. Okay. So, yeah, so um, yeah, maybe we can sort that out. If you're in ever, Sydney ever in uh, yeah. September yeah. 9th, yeah. 9th, is that what yeah, we're Yeah, yeah. If you're there in Sydney, come on over. Yeah, any, um, Sydney, any new listeners, September 9th. I'll, I'll, be, a new, I'll be a new listener. Too. Yeah, yeah. You, yes. Well, but did you get any um, celebrity like experiences? Like you would have had heaps of celebrity. Yeah, like come we've to shows done and shit. Um, James Corden. Like we've yeah, done right. his show before. Oh, um, what? Like like the late night show? Yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. Like, uh, like man, in the studio? Or like? of, yeah, like out the, <laughs> out the front. <laughs> the the fuck? Re- we've had heaps of awesome opportunities, like beyond Nitro. Like yeah. obviously a lot of the Jackass guys, but they're co- I, you'd think Nitro, Jackass. Yeah. And, um, what what have you ever been starstruck or a really great experience meeting someone? Yeah, like because uh, I heard James Corden's not the best. No, to, <laughs> not, <laughs> not really. The only person, I guess, same deal. There's it's so many times that things happen, and it just kind of gets to a point to where like, like is yeah. this real kind of thing? Yeah, and yeah. you don't kind of oh, get Beyonce blown away. and Jay Z. Yeah, right. out, <laughs> out of all the people now, like. Still Pastrana. Yeah, right. Like, wow. you know, hang out with him, like drinking beers or riding or hanging out at his house and, yeah. you know, saying, hey, man, what's up? Texting him. Like, pr- it's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, he's one of my, 
I can say he's one of my mates. Yeah. But still, when he's around, and yeah, I'm still like, <laughs> it's crazy. It's it's almost like because I have so much respect for him. Yeah. That it's like it, you can't. And and a lot of these other guys that I was lucky enough to become friends with. Yeah. Like yeah, they're my really good friends, and I can tell them to fuck off, and yeah, yeah. you know, like let's go out for a drink. There's still like not. The level of it's a different kind of friendship to my friend that I grew up with. Yeah, mm. because I have there's the like this respect and level that I see. To, like I still look up to them. Yeah, mm. it'd you be know? like being mates with Joe Rogan for Schultz or someone. Yeah, where like they've come up and now they've they're part of the scene that they've yeah. always seen and put on a pedestal. Yeah, hundred percent. But um, where was your favorite city as well? Because you said you did like fucking the United Arab Emirates. Did you say? Yeah, like, uh, I wouldn't have thought there was a big demand for BMX. Yeah, yeah. and it was crazy that they actually it was from that show. It was on the Sunrise News because it was the first show <clears throat> that they allowed the women to, to, to either sit and sit on the same side as the men, I think. Yeah. So honestly, and uh, actually, I'm not even going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Fuck, <laughs> so many sadies. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, like, it, it was a pretty nerve-wracking experience. Yeah. And um, uh, Bin Laden's cousin invited oh a God. bunch. It was like the cousin invited Trav and a couple of the guys to his house wow. to show him their car collection. Wow. Oh and man, it was like... Wow. So <laughs> like I'm, I'm bin, I'm bin MX. <laughs> oh my God. It, yeah. was, it was crazy. And then obviously because we're coming there mm. and it's like the first show to where the women are with the man, it's yeah. like, well, we're coming in and kind of interfering with their culture. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I remember, it was, I'm sure it's like a publicity thing. Nitro was like, Sunrise, you should do a piece on there yeah. for like marketing or whatever. But yeah, yeah it was on Sunrise. Very and progressive uh, Nitro. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, it was like, but it, it was a pretty... Because the money they've got over there is insane. Crazy. Hey? Like, yeah. Next level. And what they invited you to come over? Or yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, a lot of Nitro, sh like some of the Nitro shows, like a promoter will buy yeah. it. Like a lot of it's put on by Nitro. They take the risk. Yeah. Whereas... Um, you know, like the South African shows and the Japan shows, it's bought by a promoter yeah. and then it's on the promoter. To, then I guess as a business, the business doesn't, which would be Nitro, don't yeah. care about how many tickets they sell because yeah, they've already, already sold the show. Fee. And yeah. then therefore mm. it's on to on the promoter. Yeah. Um, but my favourite place, obviously apart from Perth, yeah. which is why I moved back here and Love I'm at the city. age where it's I, the like it's just, it's just me and my dad, so... Um, I want like I'm at that age to where it's my turn to kind of be here, and you know yeah. Yeah. he's getting older, so that's why I moved back here. Um, but North Carolina, I I love it. Yeah, I love it, especially where I ended up, like the last city I lived in, yeah. um, which was Cary, North Carolina. It's it's just <clears throat> it's just perfect awesome. there. It's like yeah, yeah. really nice. Yeah, nice I place. went to uh, is Charleston near there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so Charleston's awesome. I as went well. through Charleston when it was fucking snowing, man. <laughs> like everything was just frozen. But went and watched. North Carolina, that's um, Michael Jordan's Michael college Jordan's, team. Jordan's, yeah. yeah, I went and saw them. Um, everyone was super hospitable. Like, the accents were fucking, yeah. they were funny, man. Yeah. I, was, I don't know if I've told this on the pod before, but in Charleston, um, we're trying to order a, a taxi. Yeah. Okay. I said, I, I rang him up. Hey, mate, yeah, just want to get a taxi. He goes, I, I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> I can't understand you. <laughs> yeah, I, I said, I just want a taxi, man. He goes, mate, I, I'm having some real problems <laughs> understanding you, buddy. I said, I... I just want to get a taxi cab. North <laughs> he goes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. <laughs> you yeah, really fucked up North Carolina that. accent. Is yeah. that what you did? No, I literally. That's so I, good. I did. I, we'll just get a taxi to North Carolina. I'm hearing you loud and clear, buddy. <laughs> Been there in 15 minutes. I'm, I'm more right, impressed on the accent. That was like, bang on. That was yeah. great. That's that was a awesome. good hack. Just put on the American accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I struggled with the same shit over there, just booking hotels. Yeah. And they'd not understand your last name. Yeah. Like Rice Branch, the couple of guys that we went over there with, yeah. they were like booking our, our hotels under weird names. Yeah. Like, that yeah. don't sound anything like <laughs> Rice or Branch. You're like, what the fuck yeah. is Even happened? when I said uh, to my Canadian cousin, close the door, he's like, what's a da? I'm like, the door. He goes, a, a da? I don't know what a da is. I'm like, door. Do goes, oh, the door. Yeah, door. No yeah. I, I remember we always used to go to this place, Jersey Mike's, which is like a um, sandwich sub place. Yeah. And obviously, tomato, tomato. Yeah. All that. But I was always on, like, I didn't know what to do because you're with all your Aussie mates. <laughs> yeah. And you know if you say tomato, they're going to pay you out. Yeah. And then if you know you say tomato, tomato then this chick or guy's going to be like, where are you from? Or what's that? Yeah. Or, so it's yeah. like, 
Fuck and yeah. That was always an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sick. Fuck. Um, we haven't done this for ages as well before oh, yeah. we wrap up because yeah. I feel like we're getting to a natural yeah, uh, 125. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fake news we used to do a lot is like oh, yeah, rumors yeah. or anything that in the industry about yourself or the industry that you've heard that is just absolute bullshit. Like anything that's sort of fake news or a rumor, or even if it's a rumor that turned out to be true, like something. Has any of that happened with that? He likes double like people D's. are like, yeah, <laughs> they're like, oh man, Toddy, fucking, he's done this, or there's like beef in the industry. Uh, far out. And if there's not, it's fine because I mean, on the maybe spot, one or two that I, c- but um, probably couldn't tell them because <laughs> they came true. <laughs> 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 that were rumors, yeah. but I was and telling everyone that were rumors. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah. I'm just uh. trying to think. Um, no, n- no. N- nothing pretty crazy. As I said, I, I stayed, I was pretty tame. Yeah. Was it, is there any beef between the Moto guys and the BMX no, guys? Um, no, it was the same deal at the start because there was such a difference with age, gra- age gap, like a lot of young 20s and they were yeah. kind of 30s yeah. where it's a lot different when it's the same age gap but late 20s, early 30s to, to 40s, yeah. Yeah. you know? I'd um, imagine there'd be like riffing and banter like the the BMX is saying they're fucking pussies for not pedaling and yeah, but putting good, in the good effort. banter. But it was always like um, it it used to be weird. There used to be separate rooms for us, like the FMX yeah, and right. BMXs. Mm. But now, same deal. So so much has changed mm. that it's just like one room, and we're all in the same room. Mm, you know, okay. um, so yeah. th- I as I said, uh, I, the stories over the last twelve years, I could sit here and say a lot more. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of you know. Well, do the, go on. <laughs> the the basis of it, and, yeah, um, yeah. It's a it's a good group of people. Fuck um, yeah. Everyone is super humble, down to earth. Yeah, not up themselves. Like if if someone ca- if someone was on nitro and yeah. thought they were cool for a second, yeah. they wouldn't fucking be there. Yeah, yeah. like it, it that and that's why and because Trav's such a good role model. You know, he is the best role model for action sports. He's yeah. the first yeah. one out there signing autographs. He's the last one out there signing autographs. Yeah. He doesn't stop smiling. Even though even when he goes to the bar, he's not left alone because he's that big time yeah. in the town. Yeah. Um, and he like and that's the kind of the whole culture of what Nitro really is about. Like yeah. there there are maybe a couple of people that would be really good in terms of perspective from the audience, mm. but they won't fit because, you know, yeah. it's a yeah. it's a it is a really special group of people. And as I said, if if it ended tomorrow or yeah. whenever it does like i've i've had the best time and Sick. and get to do podcasts like yeah. this to where i wouldn't have met you otherwise yeah, so yeah. thanks for nice try <laughs> <laughs> are there nitro girls that go around as well um there was, a, there was a cu- like in terms of athletes uh sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nitro yeah uh, girl athletes but also like is there nitro cheerleader chicks nah, that follow around that, and stuff it's, or it's, nah? they try and keep it like family orientated yeah, gotcha. you know yeah. like none of that stuff and yeah um, but you'd, you'd have athletes, sure. Uh, yeah, there's there's always there's been a couple here and there, and some that are on some shows, and yeah. um, both FMX and and BMX, and yeah. um, it, it's cr- the same. It's it's awesome when they're there, nothing changes, and they just get amongst it. Yes, yeah, yeah they, fuck they yeah. love it. Killer. All right, yeah. well, do you have love anything that. to plug? Double yeah. D airbags. Where if people no, want to no, buy no, a ramp, no, no plug in <laughs> at all. Um, no. Nope. But if Thanks you do want to get an airbag, <laughs> check out Double D Airbags. Not, not a bag. <laughs> 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 Fuck yeah. I'm unfortunately the wrong person. Uh, Delby, you got uh, plenty uh, to plug. Well, you got plenty to plug, well, actually. I leave Friday over to Edinburgh, guys. Oh, so, no, so sad. Um, if you are in Edinburgh, hit us up. How long are you gone for? Just out of interest? Like till uh, September. So from Friday, then I come back for three days before Up and Joke on the 4th of September. Okay. So it's about six weeks and then uh, then back on tour for three and a half weeks. Okay. We'll give so you some calls, some updates, some live uh, podcasts. Yeah. And, and when's that uh, that event that you're saying that you might do or you might not that you are doing uh, now? April 5th or 12th <laughs> next year <laughs> yeah, at Astor awesome. Theatre. Nice. Yeah, teacher comedy Mate, night. So you've got a year it. of plugging that. Yeah. April. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah, it a big extravaganza. Sell yeah. it to uh, all of uh, all your new coming, uh, your new shows. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Try push it as something it, bigger and better. The first weekend is the Friday after Easter, so I think maybe the second school ho- weekend of school holidays would be better if people go away for Easter. Good. Then they're back. Good idea for the second Friday. Yeah, good idea. So yeah, 
But uh, other than that, if you're at Tomorrowland, hit us up. I'll be <laughs> at Tomorrowland in next weekend. Fuck. Is that next weekend? Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you're a real McGass. So yeah. I'm going to call you. <laughs> oh, <gasps> we should sort out like a live call. You'll be <laughs> like. A I, live I, podcast. I, 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 I. <laughs> Do a live podcast. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm just like, yeah, I just bought some double D airbags. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, I'm going to be hosting Delby's quiz while he's away. So basically every week, every Wednesday, Wednesday yeah. I'm at Paddy's except for one of them where I'm hosting another quiz for Delby. Yeah. Thank you for passing me all the work. Um, I got my first, uh, so I did, I, so I did my first little Saturday night spot, which is a five o'clock, but it was, uh, it went well, yeah. um, at the comedy lounge on Saturday. So Jane and Johnny hit us up. I am at comedy lounge Frio next Friday and Saturday, the 28th and 29th. So, yeah. First first professional night. Yeah, I'm I'm very... I'll be there. You'll be there? 100%. Fuck, get there, man. I'll be there. I'm literally... yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah. Eh? Like uh, it's awesome. uh, it's a big box tick and really nice for Jane and Johnny to say I did well. So yeah. box um, jumps, box ticks, box fuck, it, fuck yeah, smashing boxes. Uh, that in. and uh, nothing else. Real B32 media. You want to yeah. hit me up for some videography? But you know what? To be honest with you, I'm actually enjoying doing the quizzes and stuff. So yeah, let's sick. do more stuff like that. Cool. <laughs> sick. All right. Peace, boys. Peace.